Hey everyone, so today we're back in the Honda Element because I just finished digitizing some plans for this shelf. Um, a couple weeks ago I posted a video giving a whole tour of my camper setup and I've gotten a lot of really great feedback, so thank you. Um, some people were interested in plans and it's going to take me a while to digitize all the plans including the bed. So for now I thought I'd start with just this shelf. Um, the rest of this video is mostly going to be design and construction tips. Um, but all of the uh, 2D and 3D for the shelf plans, as well as the video for the whole camper in general um, will be linked below. Okay, so first let's talk about materials. Um, the side pieces and the bottom shelf and the middle shelf are made from half inch plywood. Um, the top I used three quarter plywood just because I wanted a slightly stiffer surface. You could certainly use half inch for everything or you could probably even switch to a really nice solid wood um, for the top if you wanted to be really fancy. Um, the way the shelf is designed, all of the complicated contours um, are on the back face and all of the edges on the front uh, are essentially rectangles. So you can think of each of these pieces as a rectangle where one of the edges has a funny cutout. Uh, what that means is that if you want to make this shelf um, shallower or deeper, um, all you have to do is pull the edges that are closest to us right now out and then you would have a, a deeper shelf. Um, so it should be pretty easy to modify this design to suit your own needs. Um, because the shelf doesn't have a back piece the way that a lot of bookshelves do, um, it can be very unstable side to side unless it has these support pieces here. And so these pieces here are important not only for preventing things from falling out, but also just keeping the shelf stiff in general. Um, the funny shaped contours um, also lock pretty well with the car. And so that also, I think, helps a lot with the stability. The height of this middle shelf is set for uh, two reasons. One is that it's about the same height as the stock um, plastic trim shelf. Um, so that's kind of nice. You can access this random pocket here. Um, but conveniently, um, this is also the same size as my mattress. So uh, if I pull out and set up the bed and put the mattress here, um, you can see that it's this edge of the shelf that is supporting this mattress pad and preventing it from sliding around. If the shelf were much lower or higher, um, this pad, you could imagine, would just slide into the shelf um, and then you would fall through here and that would be bad. And this is looking from underneath the top surface. Um, I installed these supports here, which are screwed in from the back side into this side piece. And these pocket screws here are um, what's holding the top on. And so that's how I can attach the top with screws, but not have any of the screw heads showing from the top. And this is just a close up of the turnbuckle um, on the right side. Uh, you can see I've screwed in the eye part of it here um, so that when I remove the shelf, the, all the hardware stays with the shelf. And when I wanna put it back in, I can just hook it down here. Um, the location of this screw is actually marked in the plans, um, but it might just depend on what size turnbuckle you end up buying. The turnbuckle on the other side is mounted a lot more horizontally because I didn't want this whole thing cutting across this whole space. Um, so this, this side does a pretty good job of uh, pulling it into the car, whereas the other one being quite vertical does a good job of holding it down towards the ground. Uh, this here is just some uh, standard paracord. And finally, um, I've added uh, two screws on either side for this uh, bungee cord to help keep some of my stuff in and I've uh, rounded the corners on the tabletop um, with a router uh, just to make the edges nicer. Okay, uh, here I have the full-sized printable PDF open in Acrobat Reader, um, and this is a gigantic um, sheet size, so when I go to print this, it'll first start by trying to squeeze everything on an eight and a half by 11, um, which isn't useful to us, but if you go to poster, it will um, tile a bunch of sheets together um, that you can print out individually and then um, puzzle together afterwards. And I think if you add things like labels and cut marks, it'll help um, make that puzzle easier. Uh, 
this is the the second sheet only has the one left hand side so I apologize for all these white pieces of paper I couldn't find a way to make this sheet any smaller on the drawing itself I've put dimensions on each of the parts um, so hopefully that means you can print it out piece it together and then double check um, in inches to make sure that that's actually what you end up measuring uh, for those of you who are curious um, this is how a little bit on how I actually made the 3d model for this um, so uh, as I said in the previous video I had um, traced these cardboard templates the first time around and that's how um, I cut out the pieces for my shelf so um, to make the the digital models um, I took a photo of those templates um, with a ruler for scale and of course the image is slightly distorted due to the camera lens so I would sketch over that and uh, try and you know roughly trace over the contours um, and I would correct for the distortion by measuring the actual cardboard piece to check dimensions and then finally I um, iterated a few times by uh, cutting out the cardboard pieces on my laser cutter and comparing the new cutouts to my original cardboard template and so the final plans are pretty close to the original cardboard templates that I used. Okay, so um, I think that's everything I could think of to say about the plans. Um, please let me know if you end up using them and how well they end up working for you. Uh, I'd love to see pictures, especially if you end up building one for yourself. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll link to my Instagram below if you want to send me photos that way. Um, and yeah, I uh, hope this was helpful. Thanks.